What's going on, Chris? Big win. Yeah, big win. Just, um, you know, got to say out of the family, made a couple phone calls to the family who wasn't able to make it, and, uh, you know, just ear to ear smiles. Did anything about the fight tonight with Leo, did anything surprise you, man? Because it looked like you had a little bit rough time getting going, but once you did, man, it was all you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've always had that problem right in the first, maybe 30 seconds or so of wanting to, it's like you don't want to go in there and, you know, slam on the gas pedal right away because everyone's both fresh. I've learned my mistake on uh, my, one of my rematches and my first loss. So I try to kind of feel my opponent out not so much run away from him or anything, but I try to kind of judge my range before I start, you know, slowly kind of putting the throttle on. And and uh, once I start feeling comfortable, then it's just like any other day sparring. So I felt good. And we talked a couple, like it was about a week or so before the fight, man, we were talking. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the loss to, uh, to Lovato. Did did that experience help you prepare for a guy like Leo that has a phenomenal jujitsu background as well? I mean, it definitely changed. Probably having that loss definitely changed my attitude going into this fight. I'm, uh, I mean, obviously you saw me in the fight where we got against the cage, and I rotated him and I put him against the cage. But um, and he really wasn't trying hard, real hard to get off. He was putting a little, uh, he was putting a lot more effort than what Lovato was doing as far as um, you know getting off the cage himself. But I didn't want to feel, I felt not content of winning those positions because against Lovato, I had him against the fence almost the entire entire um, fight. And I was just assuming that I was winning because I was controlling the ring, I was putting the pressure and, uh, you know, being more offensive. And when, you know, the fight was over, obviously it didn't come out in my favor, it came out in his. So from here on out for the rest of my career, even though I'm winning the position, getting him against the cage, I will always question if I'm even winning that exchange or not. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, give it 10 seconds or so, throw a couple of knees, and then, you know, either let go and go back and start over, or go for a takedown. Or something. Well, you left little doubt tonight, man. I mean, you put a put phenomenal work in. We didn't get to hear your uh, post-fight speech. So, is there anybody that you'd like to have next? Oh, um. I'm sure there's a long list already calling him out, but yeah, no, I'd like to fight uh, Machida. I mean, he's back. He's in Bellator now, and he's a big name. And you know, I've, I've been fighting for a long time now. I'd like to, you know, really step it up and fight somebody that's well known and challenge myself. First off, uh, congratulations on a big win here, an Thank impressive you. performance. Uh, you seem to be very comfortable on your feet here tonight, and uh, very comfortable being aggressive on your feet. Fighting a, another grappler such as Leo, did you expect more of a stand-up fight or in the clinch? You know, um, I expected it to be quite a bit on the feet, uh, just because I was planning on trying to keep it there, especially more in the not even against so much against the cage, but more in the open on the striking. I, I, I was, I, what caught me off guard is I figured he'd throw bigger punches to try to tie me up in, in the middle of the cage, yeah. or even try to pull me to his guard and then me having to continuously stand it up. I, I, that's what I was kind of anticipating after the, probably the first round. But um, yeah, I know he, he kind of really had too much of an answer. He was just, he was pulling my jab down pretty well, but it, a couple of enough jabs were sneaking through and landing and uh, you know, I just think being a little younger and and uh, I mean, I, I feel like we, I was bigger. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. He, was, he obviously had a few inches on me, but I feel like I was a little bigger. Yeah. Uh, so some interesting things going on in your division coming up, especially the Gegar Mousasi Rory McDonald super fight. Mm -hmm. How do you see that fight playing out, and how, how would you like to face the winner of that somewhere down the line? Oh, of course. I mean, I'm. I would like to fight the big fights. I mean, like I said, I've been fighting for training for about seven years. I've been fighting, I think, in belt around for about five. I'm just start my, th I just finished my first fight in my third contract, so. You know, I, I'm ready to, you know, put it out there, fight the big names, and and really try to make those leaps. I mean, I've, I feel like anytime I get close to the top, I take on a loss or something happens, I sick, I get sick, or, or and then it's kind of like a setback. So I, I really would like to, you know, get to that next level and, uh, you know, really put on some really good performances. Would you like to get one more fight in before the year? Yeah, I'd like to get my second fight in for a year. This is my first fight of the year. Mm -hmm. I would love to have a second fight. 
Also, there's uh, the welterweight tournament, of course, coming up. I know you're a middleweight and all. And, uh, would you be at all interested in maybe throwing your name in that hat for maybe? I would love. I would fight 170. I fight at 85, and I'll. I mean, it, it, with the right opponent, I'll fight at 205 as well. I mean, at, at, at this moment, um, I'm a competitor. I want to compete. That, 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 it's uh, it's a little more. It's more nervous to come in into a fight like this after an eight month layoff of not fighting, especially after a loss, let alone a win. But um, just having these big breaks, it's like you, you when you want to compete. I mean, I'm used to wrestling where you're competing on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's not possible in MMA, or at least anymore. But um, no, I mean, if I could fight three, four, five times a year, they just snowball into effect. That would be that'd be ideal, but. Yeah, no, I fear if I can fight at three different weights, then I have three opportunities. Yeah. Before yeah, I let I'll you... I'll be ready to box, too. I'll, I'll box the right opponent as well. Before I let you out of here, uh, did you see the uh, Michael McDonald injury? Did you get a chance to see the replay? I didn't. I was trying to run around, do this, that, and the other. It was very gruesome. It was uh, reminiscent of the Anderson Silva leg break from years back. No way. Mm -hmm. Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Very brutal. That, it was that. It was, it was like that. I saw the highlight of him getting carried off with a with a brace on. Mm -hmm. He snapped it, huh? Terrible. Yeah. That's insane. I look forward. To, well, I, just, <laughs> I feel sorry to him, but I would like to watch that footage. Was it just a nice check, or was it just or was it a bad kick? Uh, he, you know, I think uh, McDonald hit Dantes with a shot, and he kind of like planted on his leg wrong and almost snapped itself. Oh, okay. So it wasn't yeah. the actual kick that landed. It was the opposite. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Also, one more question. Fresno's becoming a really good fight town. I know a lot of your teammates were on this card, and mm -hmm. there's some great fighters there at the uh, at the uh, dethrone base camp over there, yeah. Ed Ruth and them. Uh, can you just give us a little insight about what it's like, you know, sparring with the Ed Ruth and guys like that? No, it's nice. Ed's, uh, you know, he came in a couple years after I started fighting, so it, it was nice because he'd come in and, I mean, his nickname is Easy Ed Ruth or Easy Easy Ed. So he um, you only really got to you do it to him a couple of times. He kind of figures out for himself. Or if you just show him something one time, he he learn he, he kind of puts his own little twist on it and he learns it pretty quickly. And uh, I don't show him all my secrets anymore because I got to be able to do something to him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, it's good. It's good because when we spar, it's it, it you got to go in there like you're going into a fight. I mean, there's no slouching. You, you get caught, you know, hanging out. And people spar, and sometimes they get kind of lazy and just kind of just go through the motions. But with myself and Ed, you just can't do that. I mean, we scrap. Also, Josh Koscheck was one of the first real fighters to break out of that gym. Yeah. Do you still see him around at all now that he's done He fighting? actually lives in North Carolina now. Uh, uh -huh. We keep in touch a little bit, but he's he's got his own gig going now. He's working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, just, just nose to, nose to the grind so mm -hmm. you know that that's the edinburgh lifestyle and that's one of the reasons why i was in fresno actually that is the biggest reason why i was in fresno so we had the same college wrestling coach we're both alumni at the same university so it was ernest james i know he had a disappointing loss tonight but you can see that he has heart and can take a punch how much sparring did you get in with ernest here um me and ernest were actually hand, hand we were we were drill partners in college but once I uh, graduated, he got really, really strong and bigger. Yeah. And then I cut down to 170. So I got small and skinny. So now that I'm up at middleweight, I've gotten a little bigger. So I can kind of go with him a little bit. We spar once a week maybe, but um, it's not the same. I mean, he's so strong, he can pick me up and slam me down wherever yeah. he wants. Yeah. And uh, you know, so, unless, so usually I try to keep it to where it's like, the rules are where it's we're only boxing. Mm -hmm. Because he's just so big. I mean, he's 265. He'd yeah. throw me anywhere he wants. All 